All right, guys, up next on the channel is going to be this awesome 72 GMC Sierra Grande 1500. So this was dropped off by actually a, a viewer, a subscriber, who was like, you know what? I have this truck. It hasn't run in nine years. Let's have you get it running and see what you can do. And I'm like, I don't usually work on trucks, but this truck is it's cool. I like it a lot. So supposedly it's original paint uh, front to back. We'll kind of figure that out a little bit more once uh, it gets clean. But it's really, really straight. So it's a power steering, power brake, air conditioned truck. Let's take a look on the inside. This is the only door that works. We have a full set of gauges, a radio, I mean automatic transmission. Not, not too bad for a pickup truck. It even has the original headliner and all that kind of stuff in it. Original seat, original carpet. I mean, it's never been touched. It has a little bit of rust right here, but that's to be expected for such an old truck. But this truck will be cool because I know it will make a sweet patina uh, truck once it is all power washed and then maybe put some compound to it. I bet we can make it look pretty good. So I'm seeing here there's a little bit of extra paint and then the the pinstripe is gone so maybe the hood and the cowl were painted at one point I'm not sure it's missing an inner fender on the passenger side so it's a possibility but you can see it hasn't been on the road since 2012 which isn't too bad considering yeah I see painted pinstripes on the hood uh, and you know what painted pinstripes on the door and then it's paint color changes here so it looks like it's only original paint from that fender all the way around and that the door the hood the cowl and this fender have been replaced and painted but you know what it's okay because I feel like once it gets all cleaned up it'll look all the same anyway so it's a pretty neat truck as of right now the story is the previous owner had an intake leak because all he did was coat the intake here's the intake all he did was coat it with RTV and he never actually uh, used gaskets and because it was running rough he took it off to fix it and then he died that's the story at least so we'll investigate a little bit further and see how true that story really was there's chopstick chopstick butt so one of the first things that we need to do on this truck is make sure that after sitting for nine years with the top end off of it that the motor still turns uh, I tried to do it by hand the other day and I couldn't so I have a breaker bar with a 5 8 uh, socket on it we'll see if we can get it to turn that way I tell you guys about the millions of daddy long legs that are in this in this truck if you don't like spiders don't watch this video that's for sure all right moves a little bit but won't move very much with the breaker bar so that means what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to pull the plugs take a look at them and then we're gonna soak the engine just because it needs to sit for like a week before we can do anything else all right, in removing these rags that have been on the engine for nine years, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. So there's a bunch of debris and stuff that's lost down in there. I'm going to get all of it out as, as much as I can. It kind of worries me that plant matter was able to come down in here, which means there's a possibility that water was able to come down, but I don't know yet. Um, other than that, it looks pretty good. I mean, there's not a huge amount of scale or rust or anything like that. Um, it's just dirty so vacuum it out pull the plugs look at the plugs see if it will turn by hand then and then go from there with all the plugs out we can kind of see the condition of each cylinder the only one I'm really worried about is maybe that one and that one. I know there was moisture in the cylinder, but it wasn't straight up water. 
So we'll just have to see how it goes. <laughs> there was also this random plug, which is the incorrect plug on the, see that would be number eight cylinder. It might be the whole reason why it was running crappy because that was the wrong plug. It doesn't go in, it won't go into the cylinder as far and it doesn't seat correctly on the head. So either way, with that being said, now that we have the plugs out, I'm gonna try one more time to turn over by hand. If it won't do it, then we'll soak it with Marvel Mystery. We'll do all the lifters, the cam, we're gonna do the cylinders, the rocker arms, everything is gonna get all set. Probably also check the oil, kinda of see what it looks like. I doubt it's gonna be anything significant. As I thought, it's just black and dirty. Doesn't really show you much, but it's better than being a milkshake. All right, plugs out. Let's see what happens this time. Nothing. Time to soak. Alright, Marvel Mystery is pretty simple. We have a hose with a funnel on the end. Put it in each hole, put some Marvel Mystery down it. And then we will hand tighten the plugs back in it and then let it sit for a week or so. Something like that. The engine in the GMC has been soaking for about a week with Marvel Mystery oil in the cylinders. I uh, have all the plugs pulled out one more time, and we are going to see if we can't get it to turn even just a little bit more. Before it would turn, I mean, like a sixteenth of a rotation, I and mean, it barely turned at all. So we'll see what we can do now that it's been soaking. Okay. That's some more progress. So it turns in either direction, but it doesn't, it comes to like a really hard stop. Ugh. And I don't know why. I feel like it might be hitting a valve or something. Let's see. Whew. So what looks what it looks like is happening is I'm turning it. It turns really nice and buttery and then it just goes clunk. And you can kind of hear it go clunk. So I think what we have is a valve that's stuck open and not coming back up. So sadly, what we have to do now is we're going to pull all the rocker arms and then see what the valves do. See, we get them pretty much all straight up with plugs out. It should turn over really, really, really easily. So to do that, basically you just take these nuts off, each one of the rocker arms, and then I'll probably leave the push rods where they are just because one less thing i got to worry about. But um, as for the rocker arms, we'll make sure we put the same ones back um, where they came from and go from there. I was originally going to put all the rocker arms and push rods and stuff in this box, but I figured, eh, there's an easier way to do this, so I've got them all loose and all turned to the side. That way I still know which ones go where, and I also will have, um, if I need to, I can tap on these valves with a piece of wood and a hammer, kind of loosen them up. Um, but now, with the valves supposedly all up in their seats and nothing pushed down to hang up and hit a piston, we're going to try to turn it over again and see if there's any change. So I'm hoping that there is because if there isn't, it means the problem, I believe, is farther down and not in the top end of the motor. Nope. Still hitting that uh, oh, really tight spot.
Well, I feel like I'm going to officially call this engine toast. And the reason being um, is because if you just even look down this intake runner, you can see this valve is completely rusted shut. Now these intake runners should probably, or the valves, should probably look like this one. You know, they're clean. Let me get you a good shot of that one. You know, they're, they're decent looking, dirty, but decent, but look at these ones. I mean, they're just full of rust. And these back two have mud daubers nests in them. You can't even see the valves. There's so much crap in them. So we'll see what the owner wants to do. I really kind of, I want to take the heads off and just kind of see what's inside the motor. Maybe with the heads off we can get it to spin. I doubt it though. We'll just have to see. But we'll see what the owner wants to do and go from there. We made a decision to pull at least one cylinder head and take a look what it looks like underneath. A couple issues I see. This was in the exhaust port and that means that wasp had to crawl somewhere from the tailpipe all the way up the header into the head. It's amazing. But I have all the bolts out, pretty sure. And we'll pop this off and we'll see what it looks like underneath. All right. Not as bad as I thought, but still pretty bad. So remember, I put Marble Mystery down some of these cylinders, and some of them sucked it all up, and some of them didn't. But Marble Mystery didn't make any of this kind of junk in these cylinders. If we look at the head, and we don't have any valves that really are sticking down that would prevent rotation, which makes me think it was something wrong with the uh, with the bottom end. So what I want to do now, if I have enough battery, is I want to turn this engine over and see how many of these pistons actually move. If any of them do. Alright, so all of those pistons move. That's good. But we're still getting that stop. This makes me think it's something on the bottom end. Alright, this one. Ah, oh, there it is. That's why this engine won't work. You ready for this? That right there is a broken piston. Yeah, that's got, that's got a chunk missing out of it. And I bet you, we'll see if it moves when we turn the engine. Sorry for the glare, but watch that piston right there. Let's see what happens. Oh, it moves. Well, they all move. But with a piston like that, let's get it to the top as you guys can see. With a piston like that, this truck will never, never run. I think there's got to be an issue with the bottom, the bottom end of it. You can see there's a chunk missing there. Like there's damage on the bottom edges as well. Yeah, something happened on that cylinder. Let's go look at the head. Here's the cylinder head. So the the valves don't look too bad. Looks like maybe something was hitting in between the uh, that valve and the piston. That's what caused it to break. I don't see any chunks or anything in there, but I just don't think this engine's going to be a good one. I mean, who replaces just one piston? 
You know what I mean? So, yeah, something ate, ate up that piston pretty badly. 